My brother tried to ruin my life for years. Now I'm cutting him off to protect my family. My name is Adam and I'm 20 years old. My brother John is 21, just a year older than me. Growing up, John constantly told me he was jealous of me and disliked me. It made me very sad because he was my only sibling and I loved and admired him a lot. I always looked up to him and tried to be close but he pushed me away. When he was happy he was a great brother of DJ Fun and Creative. However, whenever we argued, he would say really mean things and try to harm me by punching, pushing, or pulling my hair. Our parents would scold him but it never changed anything. John had an outgoing personality and a strong passion for the arts. He excelled in painting and fashion, loved experimenting with his hair, and enjoyed getting tattoos. Our father started me early in school and eventually, John and I ended up in the same grade because of my advanced academic abilities. Fortunately, we weren't placed in the same class. John saw me as his competition because I was more academically inclined. He disliked doing homework which made my average grades seem stellar in comparison. I consistently earned a mix of B's and A's while John typically got C's and B's. His strengths lay in art, drama, cooking, sewing, and dance. As I grew up, I fell in love with the violin, a passion my father encouraged. I also dabbled in learning French and Korean. John was part of the drama department at school and spent most of his evenings practicing for plays. Things took a turn for him when he got kicked off the drama team due to a fight with fellow students. The drama unfolded when John discovered his girlfriend cheating on him with another guy from their department. In response, John beat up the guy and set his bag on fire. This incident led to John being asked to leave the school. Our parents talked to the principal and compensated the guy, but John still had to repeat the 11th grade. Our parents were very disappointed and grounded him until he turned 18. The longest romantic relationship I've had lasted only six months, and it was all because of John. Abika. I wasn't on a mission to find the one, but every time I had a decent relationship, John would try to jeopardize it. Tom, once, I really liked a girl named Emily. We had been together for four months, and things were getting serious. We were on the verge of meeting each other's parents when, out of the blue, the night before, she blocked me on every platform VJ phone, message, and social media. The only way to communicate was face to face, so I ended up showing up uninvited at her house to talk. When I arrived at Emily's house, she seemed surprised to see me. I confronted her about being blocked and asked what had happened. Emily hesitated before admitting that John had reached out to her, expressing concerns and sharing stories about my alleged past that portrayed me in a negative light. He revealed that my brother had told him about how I had been talking to other girls throughout the time we had been dating, and that he found me sending inappropriate pictures to one of my female friends. I was mortified when I heard this. I tried to explain my side of the story, refuting the claims my brother had made, but Emily seemed uncertain and confused. She questioned why my own brother would lie about me and make up something so serious. I felt like crying as I explained to her how my brother had always been jealous of me and would try to mess up my relationships. I had no idea he could go so far as to make up such lies about me. The damage was done, and despite my efforts to salvage the relationship, Emily expressed doubts about continuing since she didn't want to be involved with someone who had a troublesome brother like John. I understood where she was coming from since, if I had a choice, I would not be related to him either. Heartbroken and frustrated, I confronted John about his actions. After a lot of yelling, John finally admitted to feeling insecure and jealous that I always dated attractive girls. He told me that it was always easy for me to find girlfriends, and he hated me for it. He asserted that he thought I was too good for Emily, so he made up all those lies to drive her away from me. I was so pissed at him, and it became very clear to me that his actions were driven by his solved unresolved issues of jealousy. Our parents reprimanded him and told him how wrong this was, but John didn't seem to care because in the end, he got what he wanted. J. Emily and I were broken up. This incident served as a turning point in my life, prompting me to start thinking about moving away from John. It was a stark realization that if I ever wanted to have a healthy and lasting romantic connection, I could not have him near me. We both shared a dream of studying abroad. John did have immense potential, but it seemed like fear or a lack of personal research led him to pursue computer science in our home country, following our dad's advice. Witnessing that, I realized I didn't want my parents influencing my future choices. I worked tirelessly to secure a scholarship to study abroad. However, despite my efforts, financial constraints prevented me from going, so I compromised and started university in our country, majoring in what I wanted. However, after eight months, my determination to go abroad persisted, and I kept searching for opportunities. Eventually, I secured a scholarship, 
and could finally head overseas to restart my studies. My parents were really sad that I was moving away. On my last night at home, John apologized to me for all the things he had done to me since our childhood. I don't know what prompted him to do so, VJ. Maybe it was the fact that I was moving so far away, and he could have our parents to himself now. I didn't want to pursue any drama any longer, so I forgave him. During my solo adventure studying abroad, I underwent a significant transformation. I shed some weight, met new people, discovered my personal style, and gained newfound confidence. Graduating was a major milestone, but the year that followed was tough as I struggled to secure a job. Eventually I found a good job and settled down. Meanwhile, John finished his bachelor's in our home country. He told me how he wanted to come and study in the country I lived in for his master's so I encouraged him. He started applying to different universities for scholarships, but his applications kept getting rejected. He started growing frustrated. Once, he came to visit me and stayed with me for seven days so I could show him around. He could see that I had changed, and whenever he made any sly remarks about my clothes or my hair, I didn't let it bother me. I found it very weird how John would try to control what I was going to wear or how I needed to behave in public if he and I went out for lunch. If I had some friends over, he would tell me how he didn't like them and how I needed to find better people to hang out with. There have been instances when I would be enjoying myself with my friends, and suddenly he would get weird without any apparent reason. When I took him to work and showed him where I was working, he was surprised to see how huge my office was. I excitedly told him how I'd been presented with opportunities for new experiences in the field I was working in, but then he just went quiet and didn't even seem happy for me. Instead, he shifted the conversation to himself, expressing how he would love the same opportunities and regretting some of his past choices. Later, when we were having dinner, he told me how he wanted to extend his vacation and continue to live with me, but I knew that I could not live with his judgment. I politely told him that it was better for him to find new accommodations if he wanted to stay any longer, because clearly he had some issues with me and refused to talk to me about it. This is when John lost his mind. He started yelling at me about how he was sick and tired of having me in his life when all everybody does is compare me to him and how his achievements in life are never enough. I pointed out to him that I never treated him this way and it was he who always made me feel inferior. John then told me how I was not anything special and that he could have done the same things as me if he had the same opportunities. I told him that we did have the same opportunities growing up and that I decided to apply for universities here and worked my ass off to secure a scholarship while he was failing to secure one and was somehow blaming me for his choices. Za pissed him off, and he told me that I was just a spoiled brat and that he wished I was never born. Those words hit me so hard that I just got up from the table and locked myself in my room. Three days later, when he flew back without ever apologizing to me, I could finally breathe in peace. I realized just how much he and I had changed over the years, and I had started to dislike his presence a little by now. Eventually, I met my girlfriend, Jessica, who worked in the same industry as me. Our paths crossed all the time. We had mutual friends, and during a gathering we met and had a couple of drinks. So it was super fun to talk to someone who understood my line of work, and I thought we would just be friends. Turns out she liked me and asked me out the next day. We started dating and were together for five years before she proposed to me. I'm close to her family since they live in the same country, and she has met my parents through video calls. We had been planning for our wedding when I received a job offer that would pay me double what I was earning in my current company. The only catch was that the new company was based in my home country. I discussed this with my fiancé GCE, and she and I both agreed that this was a life-changing opportunity, and I took the job. This is how I shifted back to my home country and my family finally met my fiancé, GCE. My parents really adore Jessica, and my dad spends his Sundays now golfing with her. My new job was going well, and Jessica eventually found a new also. During this time, John avoided me like the plague. He refused to meet me or Jessica even though my parents would insist. He would make up random excuses not to meet us. He and I had not talked for a very long time, so I understood his hesitation, and honestly I did not mind. I was afraid that he might try to jeopardize my relationship with Jessica, just like he had done with my previous relationships. All my previous relationships Jessica and I decided to get married after a few months of settling down in my home country. We booked plane tickets for her parents and grandparents so they could be there for us. We wanted to have a small and intimate wedding with only family and really close friends and a short honeymoon as we both are really busy with work during this time. We chose to have our wedding in the huge backyard of my parents' house, and they were extremely happy about this. Our grandparents, parents, siblings, and friends all made speeches, and we were showered with love and blessings. The only person who was missing was John. 
He had apparently come down with a fever, or so he told us, which is why he could not attend. The food was awesome, and everybody danced till midnight. We all had a great time, and then Jessica and I flew for our honeymoon. A week later we returned from our honeymoon, and I was at my mother's place showing her some photos from my wedding when John showed up. As I was talking to mom about how happy our grandparents were during my wedding, John interjected, asking if Jessica and I were having any financial troubles. I laughed and told him how I had a much higher paying job now than before and how Jessica was doing well also. He then mocked me by saying that maybe that was not the case since I had decided decided to get married in our parents' backyard. My mother came to my defense and told John that there was nothing wrong with getting married in her backyard and that I wanted to have a smaller wedding, so it made sense for me. I agreed and told John that I was thankful for his concern but Jessica and I did not like extravagant things despite our high income, since we believed in using our money wisely. John got really angry hearing this, and told me that I was just trying to show off as usual, and that I was probably lying about my salary. I shook my head, and told him that I didn't need to show off in front of him, and that we were not children anymore. He needed to grow up and not make up assumptions or lies about me. I reiterated that this is why I was glad that he did not come to my wedding. This pissed him off and he walked out crying. My mother did try to de-escalate the situation, but John didn't listen. Later he told our grandparents and some of our cousins about how I was glad he did not come to my wedding and more things from our fight. I did send him a text to apologize but he didn't bother replying. Over the years I have tried to stay out of his way as much as I can, although we did have a few good moments. Also Jessica met him and she immediately took a dislike to him. This was because John would constantly make fun of her. For example, Jessica and I both like watching Disney movies, which John considers boring, and he says that Jessica might not be womanly enough. I took a lot of offense when he said this, and later he apologized to both of us. John has also apparently expressed to my mother on several occasions that he thinks Jessica is trying to control my life. Oh. When my mother confronted him about it, he told her how whenever he met Jessica, he just had a bad feeling about her. One day, when my mother and John had come over for lunch at my place, John was telling us about how he was facing issues with his girlfriend, Emily. Apparently, Emily had moved in with John but had lost her job after three months. Since then, she wasn't working, nor was she paying any bills around the house. I told John firmly that he needed to kick Emily out of the house, since she was clearly not contributing anything to their household. Then John suddenly pointed out how I earned more than Jessica. So does this mean I should kick her out? I pointed out that while it was true that I earned more than Jessica. She earned quite well on her own and we were both bringing in the cash flow to our household. She was not sitting around the house all day eating chips and playing games. My mother agreed and told John how Jessica had sacrificed her own career just so I could take up this high-paying job here. John took offense to that and started saying how men should always be the ones earning more and how it was weird that Jessica was okay with this arrangement. I told him that not every person has a weak, fragile ego like all the people he has dated, and that Jessica loved me for who I am. John, of course, never listened and later got married to Emily despite her being jobless. Emily also had a bit of a temper, which we all witnessed during their wedding, when she got too drunk and started to pick a random fight with a waiter. John and some of her brothers had to restrain her. It was very embarrassing and I was a bit scared for John but I knew he would never listen to me so I kept my mouth shut. Yup tam the um, anul me. Over time I have noticed John and Emily's fights have only increased because every time they fight, Emily kicks him out of their home, so he has to come over and sleep at our parents' place. Place. My parents are also concerned about him, but John refuses to talk to them. One day we heard from Emily's mother that John had apparently cheated on Emily with one of his co-workers. They had a huge fight and in the end, decided to work through their marriage. They had even started going for couple counseling. This year I found out that Jessica and I are expecting a baby. We are over the moon. My parents congratulated us and told me how proud they were to become grandparents soon. They assured me that they would be there for me every step of the way. Once John learned we were expecting, he asked Jessica and me about names we liked and whether we wanted his help. Jessica and I had discussed a few names, but I did not want to share them with him because I knew how judgmental he could be. So I said a very firm no and told him no name would be shared until the baby was born and the name was official. John suggested very strongly that this would be a terrible idea, saying that we should discuss the names with other family members so we could give the best name to our baby. I told him we did not want people interacting or interfering in the name choice since this was our baby and we were going to name it whatever we wanted. Later, when it came to the baby shower, 
I asked my mother to arrange everything. I trusted my mother's judgment and besides, I hated planning. I had also asked my mother to inform everyone not to give me any gifts since we still didn't know the gender of the baby. So I just wanted to have a good time with my friends since it had been such a long time and learn tips about parenthood. On the day of the baby shower, I was pleasantly surprised to see that my mother had invited just my close friends, which is exactly what I wanted and there were non-alcoholic drinks for everyone. So I was having a great time catching up with my friends when John showed up wearing a shirt that said, Godfather to be. My eyes widened in shock as there was no way in hell that I was ever going to make him my baby's godfather. Um, it was a bit awkward as John kept telling everyone how he wanted to be a godfather. What was frustrating was that he never even discussed this with me. As the day unfolded, my mother invited Jessica, my father, and Emily to join us later in the afternoon, since we were going to find out the gender of the baby. As Jessica and I cut the cake together, we were shocked to find out that we were having a baby boy. Tears rolled down my eyes as my friends came and hugged me. However, John suddenly got up to announce that he had something very important to say. Everyone stopped talking and looked at him curiously. He looked very solemn as he took out a document and held it up in front of everyone. He then announced that a few days ago I had apparently gone for a paternity test and found out that Jessica was not the mother of my baby. He dramatically declared that the test results indicated a different mother for the baby. The room fell silent and my fiancée, C.C. Sika, was visibly disturbed. She turned to look at me as I stood there in shock. Jessica asked me what was happening and if what John was saying was true. I shook my head and looked at John to explain himself. My mother, without a doubt in her mind, asked John what the hell he was up to and why he was even making up such ridiculous things. She snatched the document from John's hand and pointed out how the mother's name didn't even have my name on it. This is when John started to laugh. My friends looked at me in bewilderment. With a smug expression, he revealed that he had downloaded a fake paternity test from the internet and came up with this plan to prove a point. He claimed that he wanted to expose Jessica for who she was and how she was definitely abusive towards me. The entire room was in shock and disbelief. I asked John if he was right in his head because my fiancé, G.C., had never even never eased her voice at me, let alone been abusive. He started to say how there was no way that a woman could be happy letting her partner earn more than her and how he had suspected for a long time that she was extremely controlling. He went on to give random examples and then concluded by pointing out how Jessica got angry when he first announced the paternity test. I yelled at him that the reason Jessica got pissed was because he publicly humiliated me by announcing that our child didn't belong to her. I told him how my fiancé had never abused me or locked me out of our house, and that he seemed to be projecting. I watched John's face get red with embarrassment. I continued to tell him how I was so sick of him, always being jealous of me, all my life, and how disgusting it was for him to turn my baby shower into such a fiasco. I announced to everyone that John had always done this, and recounted how he would lie about me to my ex-girlfriends. John stood there looking humiliated. My mother told him how he had gone too far this time. Out of nowhere, his wife Emily, who had remained silent until then, stood up in the midst of the awkward silence and walked up to John. To everyone's shock, she handed him some papers. The atmosphere shifted from discomfort to utter chaos as John started to question her about what this was. Emily told him how the marriage counseling was clearly not working for them and she had come to realize that they were toxic for each other. She told John that she had been contemplating divorce and wanted to give him these documents tonight. But since he liked making a scene, she could not bear to go back home with him. She told him that she was done with him and his drama and walked out of the baby shower. The room fell into an uneasy silence as Emily's revelation hung in the air. Guests exchanged awkward glances, uncertain of how to respond to the unexpected turn of events. John stood there stunned and speechless, holding the divorce papers in his hands. John's attempt to overshadow the baby shower with his antics had backfired in the most unforeseen way. Instead of having the last laugh, he found himself facing the unraveling of his own marriage. The once celebratory atmosphere now carried a heavy tension, and the joyous occasion had turned into a somber affair as the reality of the situation sunk in. I decided that I was done with all this. I asked Jessica to escort me out of the event, and she readily agreed. I hugged my mother goodbye, and she assured me that she would call me later to check up on me. John tried to come up to me and apologize, but I didn't even bother glancing at him. Since then, my head has been reeling. As you can imagine, everyone is quite shocked about what has happened. I've been getting calls from people checking up on me. Some of them have informed me about how John burst out crying once I left the venue and my parents kicked him out without listening to him. I feel pity for him since he has now lost me, my parents, 
and also his wife. I feel a bit bad about how I shouted at him even though, at that moment, I felt like it was justified. So was I in the wrong for exposing his jealousy in front of everyone after he tried to come up with a fake paternity test? Update 1 Firstly, I want to thank each and every one of you who took the time to read and respond to my story. The outpouring of empathy, advice, and shared experiences over the past week has been overwhelming. I am genuinely touched by the sense of community that Reddit has provided me during such a tough time. I've never posted on Reddit before. But because of what happened with my brother, I thought I needed some outside perspective. It's true that what my brother did is extremely bizarre and vile, which is why I agree with some of your comments that he might require professional help. I also need to have a talk with my parents and cut him off permanently. I can't have him behaving this way around my baby. Update 2 Hi everyone. It's been a month since I last updated. I did talk to my parents about my brother and they agree that it is the right decision for all of us to sever ties with him. John shows no remorse and has now gone around telling people about how I made a huge deal out of his prank and brought up his past in front of his wife, which prompted her to divorce him. Emily has since talked with my parents and apologized to us for how she treated John in the past. She has told us that the reason she would kick John out of their place was not because she was abusing him, but because whenever they had fights, he would punch her and kick her in the face which would make her feel unsafe around him. This was very shocking for us to hear because I always thought that Emily was the one at fault. But then she showed us pictures of her broken nose and black eye. It's lucky that Emily loved him enough not to go to the police. Otherwise, John would have ended up in jail by now. Clearly, they had a toxic relationship and I'm kind of glad that they are getting a divorce. So my parents have talked with John and told him firmly that he is no longer welcome at their place or mine. John started with his waterworks. But my mom was so pissed after what he had pulled at my baby shower that she just went off on him and told him that the next time he ever came near me or my baby, they would get a restraining order against him. So they told him firmly that he needed to talk to a psychiatrist because something was clearly not right in his head. John has refused to seek help and told my parents that they were being unfair by favoring me more than him. Anyway, I have blocked him from everywhere and so has Jessica. We have installed security cameras at our house, so if he ever comes to my place, I will involve the police. Update 3 It's been 8 months since my last update. I am happy to write that I gave birth to my baby boy recently. The pregnancy was tough, but I am so glad that our child is here. We have named him Alex. I can't believe that I am finally a parent. Our home is now adorned with the laughter and cries of our little one. Jessica and I are adjusting to the new role of being parents, and despite the challenges, we are relishing every moment with our little one. My parents have been there for us every day as I get used to becoming a parent. Jessica's parents are flying in to see us next month. John has not disturbed us even once. The last I heard he and Emily got a divorce, and he decided to pack up his things and move to a different city, perhaps to start afresh. I do feel sad that my brother cannot be a part of my celebration, but as a parent, I have to protect my little one.